Well, folks, here we go. This is a kind of a day, a video that has been a long time coming. And what I'm going to talk about is something I've seen all over the world, so to speak, where I've traveled and we put on clinics. And what it's about is there's there's a flat horse, there's a horse in collection, there's a horse in self-carriage. And it's defined many different ways depending on how many syllables you want to use. Personally, I just know that a flat horse is hollow in the back and his nose is out. And when you pull on him, his nose goes higher. So that's the opposite of what I want to get done. And the reason we're doing this video is because I'm trying to address the things that I'm watching because in the last six months, there's been a lot of bridle horse videos on the YouTube, which is great. I, I'm glad to see people starting to figure out they can throw them correction bits away. But the other side of the coin is, is that it's all about the bit. And what we need is for the horse to carry itself, meaning it's going to do whatever my skeleton asks and have its head in a position where he's really well balanced underneath me. And that's kind of what this is all about. It's about the balancing the horse and being more accurate with the feet. And I believe the only way you get that in a Western bit is through collection and self-carriage. Collection comes first and self-carriage comes second. Self-carriage is when they carry themselves. All right, what we're doing this morning is forward and backwards, which is what you know I always do because horses don't naturally walk backwards. And if I try to do this exercise walking forward in a circle, I'm going to pull harder than I, I want to. If I walk backwards, I don't have to pull very hard. So I want you to watch this evolve because this horse needs to learn this. As you can tell, he's a big, long, thoroughbred horse. And the way he was ridden before I got him was a... Looks like somebody watched eight different videos and did every one of them. So I'm not going to whine about before and rescue and all that crap. I'm just telling you, this is what's in front of me. So I need him to walk backwards and feel comfortable about it. And he needs to break right here, plus get his skull on the vertical, not behind the bit. So what it looks like is I walk backwards. And what I'm doing is I'm doing what I've, I've, I've talked about this in all my clinics and either I'm not a good teacher or something, but a lot of people don't believe me when I tell them that what you want to do is to raise up in the saddle, line your ankle and your ear up, take your legs off and lean back about a half an inch. And that for me is the cue for a horse to walk backwards. So I start off, as you know, they're clocked out. So when I pick this rein up, I'm telling the horse, excuse me, the politest way I know to train a horse. So I just said, excuse me. Now what he should do when he's done is what he just did, plus shift his weight back without his feet moving. That hasn't happened. Because his weight didn't shift to the back, he already tells me he's still heavy on the forehand. So I will adjust my rein, and I will start to ask, and you can watch him melt. And I'll give it back. All right, now I'm going to add my body right now. I've asked. It didn't happen. I pull and I release. Now I pull and I release. Now the position of my hand, meaning here, 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 wherever it needs to go, I decide by the horse. See how his head's starting to go down? This is from being ridden two-handed in a snaffle bit incorrectly. So I'm going to say, excuse me. Now, if you would, please walk backwards and I'll give you the rein back. Don't drop your head down. There. That step was intentional. Now, this exercise, if you're going to ride a western bit, which I really am glad to see, meaning you're going to ride one-handed, and of course, cowboys do it because we rope. And But there's a western style of riding, which is one-handed. He needs to find that spot on a loose rein without dropping his skull. Now I have to make this conversation to where he understands that I know that before you put your head down, but now I need you to put your head up. 
break at the withers. There. Now, if you would, please listen to my skeleton. The, you see the rain keep getting loose. It's because I keep throwing the slack so that he will walk intentionally and feel my skeleton. I just made the transition for three steps right there. So now I shut it off. I wait on his mind to change. You can see his ears. He's listening. He's thinking. I'll tell him you're fine. There. Now, now the reality of what you're watching, you remember this is Pat talking, my opinion, is I'm having a conversation with this horse and I'm not going to get in a big hurry and I'm not going to make him run anywhere. I'm having this very, very important conversation that he feels comfortable about walking backwards on a loose rein and not having his head down lower than his knees. That's all I'm doing. Here it comes. Now by now, he should be walking backwards, but he's not, okay? So I'll bump. Now my legs are off. Watch my left leg. Understand that my right leg is doing the exact same thing at the exact same time. I just woke him up with my flat leg to get the feet moving. Now the feet are moving. Now, he, right over there, he started to deviate. And that's a brace in a horse. And what it means is they're bracing against your hand. When they go wallering with their rear end or front end crooked, it's a brace. Don't, don't allow it. So I put my leg on him to straighten him out. When he straightened out, then I stopped. So now, and remember, I'm breaking this down. Here it comes. Didn't make it. Now your head is staying high, your feet are moving, you're on a loose rein. Okay, he gets it. There's no doubt in his mind what it is that I want. Now what really happens is that when I walk back up to that same exact position and do it again, he may choose to not do it. It has nothing to do with me now. He's already showed me that he can do this. So I'll walk back up again. And you can tell by the speed that this is taught at. I relax my body, exhale, and he stops. Go ahead and clock out, horse, because I need you to relax. You're waiting for something. This is perfect right now because when I reach for that rein, I'm going to have to re-correct him all the way up to the correct position. So this is not what I want. Excuse me. Raise your head up. Thank you. Now, if you would, I took my legs off, so I need you to walk backwards. I'll give you the rain as soon as your feet start to move. I'm watching the horizon, not your skull. I can feel if your head starts to sink. All right, now he is, in fact, intentionally walking backwards. This is the journey, if you're interested, I'd like you to take so that you get your horse that's in a western bit, whether it's a slicer, half-breed, curb bit, spade, doesn't matter. And for you folks that hang spades on horses, this should all be done before you hang a spade. It's done with a bosal. Now, what I haven't felt good about is the ears are stuck. And when he starts looking at other things, then I know he's starting to understand it. When the cricket is rolling intermittently now, so I know that he's, he's not real bothered, but he's on the edge. And I know it doesn't look like it, but what I can feel is that he's deciding, do I want to say hell no or do I want to walk backwards? Now, I'm about to reach for them again. And when I do, this time I will incorporate my legs and my spine and my skull and see if he shifts backwards. Nothing. Okay. But the skull came up. So now I'll say, that's what it means, horse. When I do that, I'm touching him with my both legs at the same time. I'm not driving a spur through him. There. <sighs> Exhale. Relax. And there again, you know, to me, this is why I enjoy riding horses. I'm kind of a cheap date. So this is the fun part for me. When I have a horse that doesn't understand 
a better way. I'm sorry, but it's a better way when you have a balanced horse. So I get to explain the better way, and I get to do it really slow. This is not something you're going to jam into them by running up and down a fence. Now I'm going to walk back up there one more time, and I'm just going to ask him. If he makes it, so be it. If he doesn't make it, remember, it's not you if you're presenting yourself, right? It's him. He's got to process this whole thing. Excuse me. Forward. Now, I'll drop my spine when I'm ready to stop on loose rein. Now he stopped. Now I'm going to open my legs and lean back and say, I need you to walk backwards. I just moved his right hip over, and I've got him walking backwards with his skull where I want it. I don't need you to leak down. Don't leak down. There. Now, see the, see the horse? He's walking backwards intentionally. He just let out the deep breath. I'm going to try to tell him, you can lower your skull, and you can move your ears. You're fine. You got it. It's, it's not that big a deal. This is what I'm telling this horse. You understand it, horse. There's no doubt in your mind. Now, when his number comes up, because I'm rotating my string, and he doesn't do it, I don't care. You cannot train a horse, but you can outlast him. So when I get on him again, if he hasn't made it, I'll do this again. Now, I also ride outside. He'll walk and nod outside, and I walk, trot, lope, go riding, blah, blah, blah. But the point is, when I have a disciplined ride, which is what you're watching, we need to cross this bridge. So what he's told me is, this is all wonderful. It came out the bottom of his feet, but his mind hasn't changed his mind yet. He's not so sure about this. Okay, now if I kept doing this now, after him walking the correct way, I would turn it into drilling. In other words, I will drill you like they made us do in the army until we knew our left from our right, over and over and over. Well, the army didn't work real well for me. Anyway, folks, this is what I'm talking about. So if you're riding in a western bit, I really wish you'd consider getting your horse nicer and, and in collection and self-carriage. Deb, you got anything you want to add? Um, well, I think that people have a confusion over collection. In other words, they think that their horse is light if they never touch the rein. They never gather the horse up. That's correct. Yeah, because you see this around. Well, he's really soft. Well, he may be soft, but he's hollow in the back and strung out. Collection is when you put the horse in a frame because a human's sitting on his back. When I go out and make a circle, there is no collection. I'm throwing him the rein. He's trotting and reaching and crossing country. But if I'm going to stop back up, turn around, work a cow, or open a gate, he needs to be in collection. But he's like 20 feet long. I mean, and oh, by the way, when he gets in self-carriage doing it, that he just told me when he does this in self-carriage, as in carrying himself on a loose rein, walking backwards, he has told me, yes, I do understand to listen to your skeleton. Here, he just changed his mind. Just now. That's how long it took for him to get out of that mode of like hell with you. Well, I'm not going to make him do it again. I'm done. So I'll leave with some kind of dignity. And as you notice, he's not dripping sweat. He's not heaving in the flanks. And he'll be fine. And, and I guess... There's two things I do. If this was a colt right now, and I was teaching it to walk backwards, just so you guys know that they're doing colts, right where I'm standing, I would get off, loosen the cinches, and lead him back to the barn because they do not expect it. This horse, I'm going to let him walk away from camp and then turn right and go back to the barn and unsaddle him. So I guess what I'm saying is, is don't do it like... A machine, the same thing every day. Mix it up. Now when I get back to where I'm going to unsaddle him, I'm going to turn him around 50 feet from the trailer and he's going to walk backwards. I'll show you when I get over there. And that'll be the end of the lesson today. And um, once again, you know, we've been at this a few years now. We've got a lot of folks that appreciate it. And this is exactly why we do these videos. It has nothing to do with anything other than me sharing what I know and if it works for you, go for it. If, if you don't like it, just 
that's the beauty of a TV. You can change the channel. You know, if you want to see a cloud of dust and a bunch of running around like idiots, have at it. But this is the real deal of where a person needs to be if they're going to ride western. Thank you. Goodbye. To all my friends in Australia, goodbye. <laughs> Right, folks now what I'm doing is the trip where I on saddles about 50 feet away or 60 and what I want you to do is watch his skull and watch his ears and watch his brain and watch his breathing and you'll see exactly what it is about a horse staying with you yeah he's in position now for what I want see where the head's going I'm not doing anything now he's looking back and he's looking forward and he's waiting for the cue. I'm going to say excuse me and give him the cue to take my legs off, prepare my skeleton, everything that I talked about a second ago. Right now. Now I want him to connect the dots that if he does get moving, he'll get to the trailer quicker. You see how the rear end keeps doing? He wants to turn around and walk to the trailer. So this is another lesson of connecting the dots. Now watch, when his brain figures out that he's walking to the trailer, everything will go away. Now what day that'll happen, I have no idea. This is gonna go away, everything you're watching. As soon as he figures it out, he doesn't need to do that, there. Now watch. His skull's back where it belongs. I'm done. Start paying attention to the little things, the details. Hey folks, uh, this is another video about collection. And this is a perfect mule to have it in because if you'll notice he's half the length of the last bay horse we had so the collections you can get it but it isn't that far from here to there so just bear that in mind now what this this is uh, Tigre and what he has been taught is how to yawn okay you teach a horse to yawn by pulling on him and not releasing and then they figure it out pretty quick so it can be a horse or a mule doesn't matter Excuse me, I've got a nose band that isn't tight. It's just sitting here right now. So I want to show you what happens. And I've got my snaffle bit so I can listen to the cricket. But when I ask, you'll watch his mouth start to open. And if you don't fix it, then he'll start getting behind the bit and just gapping at the mouth. So I've got a I've got to stop that. That was taught by a human, so I got to stop it. So for now, the nose band gets buckled and it discourages it he's not allowed to open his mouth now. About how much of a do you have a finger in there? No. So just snug. Snug. 
That's it. But not the roller buckles like the dressage people use. You don't cinch it down like you're cinching a horse. You just buckle it, and I know that he can be comfortable with that to where it is, but, but yet he can't open his mouth. And my goal, depending on how good I present myself, is to get rid of the nose band, which I will get rid of as soon as he figures this out. And so there's a lot, it's a different story here. I'm talking to him about listening to my body. And so I'm taking away the one thing that he was doing where he wouldn't listen to my body because he just gapped at the mouth and I pulled harder until he backed up. And that, I don't want to do that. So I've cut my time in half now by putting the nose bend on him. And as soon as he finds out that he can walk backwards on a loose rein, then he'll have no reason to, to gap at the mouth. So that's what this is all about. <laughs> now once again, I start from here with nothing and I'm going to offer my body as I raise my hands. And this meal will be kind of fun to watch because he's, he's going to be with us for a while. So now I keep my hands low, and if you notice, I have a direct line now. I don't have the length of a cheek piece. I'm not worried about his withers. I'm worried about him just walking backwards off of, the, off of my body and the pressure. So my bid is pressure and release. It's not pain and release. It's just pressure and release. So now I'm asking him to walk backwards. As soon as he moves, then I'll give it back. So now I sit up and take my legs off. And I start pulling, and I'm waiting for him to get independently walking backwards on a loose rein. So he understands what I want. And what you can't see, I don't think, is that he'll try to open his mouth, and, he's, and he, he knows he doesn't have to open his mouth. So he'll, he'll keep his mouth closed and roll the cricket, which means he's not pushing his tongue on the mouthpiece. And I'm saying, you got it. Don't worry about it. And one of the reasons I've decided to go ahead and use this mule, I've, I've given him probably, I don't know how long we've had him, a month maybe. And he's had a couple of disciplined rides. Mainly I've just been packing him and letting him relax. But if you'll watch now, I'm going to do everything at once with my skeleton again. But it's a different story because of the snaffle as opposed to the western bit. When I'm done he will be in a western bit. Now he's been rode in a bit for a long time so it's not like I'm breaking him as the first ride. This isn't how it is. This is just a mule learning to walk backwards off of my skeleton. Now when I get some intentional steps I'm going to relax, relax my body and let him know it's over. So now I'll go right back to where I was and I'm relaxed in my legs. My legs are hanging on him. So when I stop, I'm just gonna exhale and sit down and watch my spine. So I just relax my spine and he stopped. Now this is all done at a very slow walk. It's not like I'm expecting him to slide 20 feet. So now I'm gonna say, okay, here we go. I need you to walk backwards. And I know there's a percentage of his brain thinking about his mouth. And as soon as he figured out he can't open his mouth, he's figured out to yield to pressure, which is called the release. And so he's trainable. I want a horse to be trained off of the concept of release, not pressure. Now he needs to move over, not forward, just over. Left foot, there. Now, where were we? Oh yeah. I'm trying to give it back so I can share with him that this is not a contest. It's simply you moving off of my skeleton. That's the idea. So now, once again, you just start at the same place and quit at the same place until they get it. You're creating a habit. Here it comes. I'm going to give him all the slack I can and he'll walk backwards. That's it. Alright, now 
he's got to start getting a handle on him. So what I've done is forward and back. Now I'm going to work my way into my arena and I want to show you how I'm going to get the bend in him. Now once again, I want to bend in this mule so that he'll be able to be handy without holding steady on the rein. I'll, sh I'll just go around my arena here and show you. So I'm heading to the left and I've got my short left rein, my long right rein. I can see his left eye and I can't see his right eye. If I went into my arena now, it would be too small of a circle. And he would probably do it, but I don't want to set him up to fail. So I'm giving the rein back as soon as he gives his jaw. Now every time I get to the gap where he can know he's, where home is, he's going to fall into sin. So I need to be ready to put an outside pressure with my right foot as he starts to drift. If he makes it one step drifting, I'm late. So there's a mule walking round. Now when I get over here, he thinks he's going home. And I don't blame him. So right now is when I start putting my outside leg on. The turnaround, I'll shorten up my right. Ask him to walk in a circle. You see me giving it back? Here's what I think you don't need to do. You don't need to do all this stuff. Like for me to turn around, here's what I don't need to do. That's what you do when you first get on and you're starting a colder and starting an animal. You got to guide them through it. You don't need to do that when they've been ridden. They get it. They're a lot sharper than we are. Look where I want to go. My left leg is active. My right leg is absolutely nothing. Noodle. But I want to give it back. I'm not going to hang on this mule. That's why I learned to yawn in the first place. So I've got my arc. You'll see it as I come around. My inside leg now is driving him out. My outside leg is in pulsion. You can see the arc right now. So he's ready. The goal is to not let him step over the poles. Get him as close to the poles as I can without him stepping over them. Bend. Bend, bend, now, the stop. Now, left hand shifts the weight. I'm not allowing him to walk forward. Left foot drives the right front foot out and back. Right hand gives me the right eye. There's the bend. Left hand engages, left toe out. Not allowed to walk forward. Walked around with the forehand. Now, I had a lot of pressure on my hands. Okay, that'll go away over time. What he has done is he connected the dots on the cue to walk backwards, but he hasn't connected the dots of my skeleton asking him to turn left or right. Stop over here. I want the right hind foot as close to the pole as I can get it. I've got my left eye. He's in an arc as we sit here. Now, I've already given him direction right there. I, this hand is loose. There's direction. Right toe out. Left leg off. Looking over my shoulder. Pull straight back as the foot moves with my right hand. There's the breath. Goodbye.